Hey guys, Logan here from Popular Woodworking Magazine and Woodsmith Magazine. Being in the woodworking publication field, we get asked a lot of questions. And one set of questions that gets asked very often has to do with sharpening. And in particular, how do we sharpen, what do we use, and how do we get our tools sharp and maintain them? So in this video, I kind of want to walk through some of the basics of sharpening. Uh, and I'm going to concentrate here on the stones. What I mean by that is water stones, oil stones, and diamond stones. I'm not going to worry about sandpaper sharpening, which is sometimes referred to as the scary sharp method. That's a whole different beast. Uh, but instead, we're going to concentrate on the stones. But before we get into each of these types of sharpening stones and their pros and cons, let's talk about some basic sharpening. Now, even if you would consider yourself a power tool user, you probably have something in your shop that needs to be sharp because a sharp tool is a safe tool. You either probably have a block plane, a hand plane, or at least a set of chisels. When you go to sharpen something like this plane blade, we have two flat planes that need to meet together and that makes a sharp edge. To do that, we need the back to be flat and we need the bevel to be flat as well and we need that bevel to be sharpened. You can do this a couple different methods. Uh, what I do is, just because I find it faster, is I hate freehand sharpen. So I rock the heel of the uh, chisel or plain iron on the stone until I feel the reference of the bevel. And then I sharpen freehand just by locking my elbows and my wrists at the proper angle. However, many manufacturers make these guys, and these are honing guides. And these simply, Accept the blade, you tighten it down, and then it gives you a good reference wheel for that blade or chisel to ride on. That keeps a consistent angle. And it's important to note that either freehand sharpening or sharpening with a honing guide works perfectly well across water stones, oil stones, and diamond stones. So let's go ahead and dig into water stones real quick. Okay, so when it comes to water stones, Obviously, the name kind of says it all. These are stones that are lubricated with water. Now, with water stones, we have two different varieties. Uh, there are two basic varieties, let's say. We have man-made water stones and we have natural water stones. Uh, most commonly here in the US, at least, we have man-made stones. Uh, and what I like about water stones is they cut very quickly um, because the top layer of grit wears away as you sharpen, so you always have fresh grit coming to the surface, and it gives you a sharp edge, so the stone cuts quick. What I also like about water stones is they're available in countless grits. You can get water stones from probably about 100 grit, clear up to 20,000 grit, and probably higher than that. So you can really get a good, keen edge. Now, looking at water stones like this, these guys here happen to be uh, man-made stones and these ride in a water bath. Uh, this container here is actually designed to hold this little uh, three-sided stone holder and it just keeps the, the stones in a water bath. Now most of the time with natural stones, especially Japanese water stones, you just spritz down the surface with water. You don't actually soak them. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to talk about the man-made stones like these guys. So most of the time, uh, you'll see people have these in a water bath and they keep them in their shop, whether it's a little uh, Rubbermaid tub with water in it and all their stones or a little container like this. It means the water is always permeated through the stone and it's ready to go. Now the water does a couple of things. Uh, the first and foremost, and probably the most importantly, is it helps clear away any shavings that come off of whatever you're sharpening. So like this iron blade, this plain iron blade, as you're sharpening, the water is picking up those little metal filings that are coming off and it's carrying them away. The other thing it does is it washes away uh, a slurry. So as you're sharpening, you'll notice the stuff up here kind of gets mucky looking. Uh, and what that is, it's creating a slurry of metal particulates and of the grit that's been kind of used up. Uh, so as you're sharpening, I always like to splash a little bit more water on the surface and just keep that fresh grit on the top. Now, like I said, these are great because you can get a variety of stones. Here I have uh, roughly a coarse, medium, and fine. I would say we're probably at a 4,000 grit on the fine side, and you can get much, much finer. And like I mentioned before, I like these because they cut quickly. You can hear that as you're sharpening, it's cutting very fast. 
Um, the one thing that I don't like about these, now there's a couple things I don't necessarily care for about water stones, and I went through a period where this is all I was using, is that they do tend to dish out because they're soft and because that grit wears away, they start to get hollow in the center. So they require regular maintenance. Now it depends on how much you're sharpening, what you're sharpening, on how much maintenance you have to do. Uh, but good practice is every two or three times you sharpen, grab a reference stone and flatten off the water stones that you're using. Now obviously this is going to wear down the life of the stone. Uh, so something like these guys that are about half inch thick, depending on how much sharpening you're doing, could wear away very quickly. Another thing that I don't really care for about water stones is that they live in water. So you're introducing water onto your tools, which we all know rust is bad. And if you don't get everything dried off, uh, they can rust. And depending on how much you're sharpening, uh, how much you're using your stones, how much you're changing your water, the container that these stones live in can get a little nasty. And the final thing that's not really a, a good benefit of water stones is if you have your shop in an unconditioned space and you live in a cold climate, you don't wanna leave the stones in the water bath during the winter months. Uh, because if the water freezes, it will shatter the stones. And water stones themselves are generally pretty fragile. Uh, so they need to stay in a warm area in your house, especially if you have a shop outside. Uh, but they do work and you can get stones, water stones, that are relatively inexpensive or extremely expensive. Uh, but the old adage of you get what you pay for holds true with stones. So like I mentioned, water stones are what I started with um, because I got a set fairly inexpensively at a garage sale from a woodworker. Uh, and I, I did like them, um, but because I was moving around a lot, traveling with my tools, I decided to change my sharpening system. What I went to are these guys, and these are natural oil stones. So oil stones are really the next category I wanna talk about. Just like water stones, there are different types of oil stones. There are man-made oil stones, and there are natural mined oil stones. And these ones in particular are a natural oil stone uh, called an Arkansas stone, and I'm sure it's a term you've probably heard of. Uh, and traditionally, they came from quarries in Arkansas. And one thing about oil stones that's a little different than water stones, and it's actually different between all of these, uh, the way the grit is determined is a little different between each type of stone. Uh, in the water stones, we have 1,000 grit, 2,000 grit, 3,000 grit. We don't really have that with oil stones. Some of the man-made ones may have some form of equivalent uh, that they sell them as, uh, but natural stones are referred to as either soft, hard, hard black, or a hard translucent white stone. Uh, and the softer the stone, the more coarse it is. Um, so these are the ones that I use. Just like water stones, these guys can wear. And you'll probably notice this if you've ever went into flea markets or thrift stores and found old stones, there'll be a dish in the center. Especially if you look at something like a razor stone uh, for sharpening straight razors, a lot of times they're dished out right in the center. So these guys do wear, but they don't wear as quickly as the water stones. Now, a lot of manufacturers that sell man-made oil stones say that their stones can be used either with water or oil. But it's important to note, once you put oil on a stone, you can never again use it with water. The water will just beat up on top and it won't work. So this is the set that I use. And like I said, these are natural stones. So I have a soft, a medium, or a soft, a hard, and a hard black. And these give me a really good edge. Another part of this kit is Quite clearly, we need oil with oil stones. Um, so I use just a vintage can that I have uh, had at home, and I use a mixture of baby oil and mineral oil, and it seems to work really well. Keeps the swerf away. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about oil stones is that they tend to cut fairly slowly. So if you have a lot of reshaping to do on an edge, usually it's faster to go back to a grinder and then come back here for your final edges. And the other thing that I don't like is because you're introducing oil to your tools, it won't rust, but if you don't get the oil cleaned off of, let's say, a, a chisel blade, and you put that on your workpiece, that oil can leach into the wood. And I've had it cause a couple of small issues, nothing I can't handle, uh, but it is just something to be aware of. But overall, I do like the oil stones better than water stones. But that leads me into the next thing, which is gonna be diamond stones. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice that this diamond kit I have here is much smaller uh, than everything 
ounce I had as far as oil stones and water stones go. Uh, and that's one thing I do like about diamond stones. Now I just started using them and I've really enjoyed using the diamond stones. Um, and I think this might become my new go-to sharpening system for a couple reasons. Uh, but let me show you what's in my kit here. So this is a self-contained kit that really has everything I need to do 99% of all my sharpening needs. Um, with, let's get that strap out of the way and this stone out of the way. As you can see, this diamond stone looks like just a piece of metal, but when you feel it, you can quite clearly feel that there's a little bit of grit on it. Uh, and that's really what makes these stones uh, kind of interesting to me, is that they use diamonds that are either bonded to the surface in some mechanical connection, whether that's a resin or epoxy, uh, or the higher quality ones like these guys are actually plated with diamonds. Um, so these are machine ground flat and then plated with diamonds. Uh, so you can feel that that surface is very, very rough um, and smoother on the other side. And that is one of the other things that I like about these diamond stones is that you can get a two-sided stone. Now you can get two-sided oil stones and two-sided water stones, uh, but when you do that, you get fairly thin layers and the two-sided oil stones at least are gonna be man-made and I just personally don't care for man-made oil stones. They don't feel like they cut very well, to me at least. Um, so with something like this diamond stone, I have a good 300 grit side, which is gonna be my coarse side. And then I have a thousand grit side. Now, remember a moment ago, I said the grits don't translate well between diamond, oil, and water stones. And that is especially true here. This being labeled as a thousand grit stone, it's actually much, much finer than what you would consider a thousand grit water stone. In reality, this is probably much closer to a 4,000 grit water stone. But one of the big things that I like about uh, diamond stones is how quickly they cut. Uh, even though this is a thousand grit and it leaves an edge like a 4,000 grit, it cuts about like a 600 grit, so it cuts extremely quickly. Now, like these other ones, you do need some form of lubrication. I know a lot of guys that will dry sharpen on diamond stones and then they try to figure out why their diamond stone doesn't last very long. It's because the metal particulates off of your iron or your chisel clog up the stone. Uh, so you end up basically packing the diamond surface with shavings and then you can't get to the diamonds anymore. So you do need to lubricate them with something. Uh, some guys use water. Again, I'm not a huge fan of water if I can avoid it. So instead we use like a lapping fluid. Uh, this is gonna be a petroleum based lapping fluid that is really gonna carry that swarf away and any loose diamonds that break off, especially during the initial uh, handful of uses on the stones. Now, the other thing I like with this, at this kit in particular is that I keep a strap with it so I can get a really keen edge but I also like the fact that I can get smaller sharpeners. Now, it's important to note that you can get uh, little different shaped sharpening stones, slip stones that are both water stones and oil stones. So you can get specialty shapes for sharpening the inside of carving tools and stuff like that. But I like these thin little diamond sharpeners uh, for a couple of different tasks in my shop. Um, I use one when I'm turning to hone my tools real quick, but the beautiful thing about diamond is it's very hard. You can actually use a card sharpener like this to touch up uh, carbide router bits. So if you have a router bit that's just kind of burning and not really cutting real well, uh, very quickly you can set this on the edge of a stone, rub your router bit carbide across it, and you can actually touch up and sharpen that carbide which is really nice. You can't do that with water stones or oil stones. So that's a huge benefit and a good way to uh, extend the life of your router bits a little bit without having to send them in to be sharpened. Now, the other thing I like about diamond stones is they have a pretty long life, at least when you compare them to water stones. A good quality diamond stone will last a handful of years. And for a lot of people, depending on how much time you use in your shop, uh, it could last you 10 or 15 years. Most manufacturers that produce quality diamond stones will guarantee them for five years, uh, which is a really nice added benefit. The only thing that I don't like about diamond stones is because of the way they're manufactured, you can't get a really, really ultra, ultra fine edge like you would on a 20,000 grit water stone. But for 
almost every bit of woodworking that I do, the thousand grit stone gives me a really good quality edge. So that's just a quick overview on a couple different sharpening systems. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of information to make a decision for yourself on what type of system you want to pick up. And full disclosure here, uh, this kit that I have here uh, is a kit I recently started using and I like it enough that we're actually gonna start carrying and selling these kits. Uh, so these will be available on our website uh, and I really like them, which is why I asked us to start carrying them. So if you guys are interested in getting a diamond sharpening kit like this, check out the link below uh, and you can go over them there.